Becoming full stack opens a lot of doors to success for any web developer. Assuming you just became one, your options for making money are to start by either founding a company or joining one. While developing your own project is great, managing a product or leading a team are entirely different beasts. If you're new here, my name is Ty and on Eat the Blocks, we lend a hand to budding Web3 developers. In this video, I explain what I currently look for when interviewing candidates for software jobs regardless if it's Web3 or not. Before you apply for the job, the ability to be sociable is often the most underrated and ignored skill by beginner software professionals. However, the skill is vital to your ability to network and gain access to interviews in the first place. Unfortunately, the truth about employment and career opportunities is to keep in mind that it's not what you know, it's who you know. If you're a self-taught developer, consider it a double-edged sword. It individually demonstrates a great degree of self-sufficiency, but poses a potential communication issue with the team. The only way around this is to get a mentor that will guide you through standard industry practices and terminology. Finding a mentor can be difficult on your own, much less the one that is active in the Web3 space. I would personally start looking at hackathons if you're still building your portfolio. If you're still having trouble, however, Eat the Blocks offers an official mentoring program through our main website. At a minimum, you should make sure to master the art of teamwork. The ability to collaborate, deliver criticism, as well as receive it in a constructive manner is paramount. No amount of individual technical prowess can compare to the results of a group that knows what they're doing and can efficiently do it together. Agile is an adaptive development technique that helps software teams swiftly deliver higher value to clients with fewer hiccups than the old waterfall technique. It is an iterative approach to the software development lifecycle that allows for constant revision and feedback. This keeps developers motivated because it creates a people-oriented environment instead of making everyone feel like a cog in the machine. This style of development is used by almost every blue chip company and two thirds of companies worldwide. With that in mind, it is literally impossible to understate the importance of learning it and will always be the first thing I look for during interviews. When you apply for the job, the basic requirements are to have your CV and portfolio at the ready. To make yourself stand out, read the entire job description and make sure you're competitive by tailoring your CV. Having a LinkedIn profile makes it very easy to do because they automatically generate them for you and all you have to do is trim the fat. Other than personal projects, a good way to build your portfolio is to participate in hackathons. Personal projects show me what you're capable of on your own, but hackathon projects show me how well you work in a team. While your resume should only be a single page for five to seven years of relevant experience, your portfolio should be as detailed as possible. The main factor that determines the priority of your interview tends to be your ability to demonstrate, not describe. CVs or resumes are great for getting a feel for your experience, but if someone with comparable credentials has a better portfolio, proving that they're not all talk, I will always pick them first if the budget allows for it. On the flip side, I will prioritize candidates with a worse CV but better portfolio if the budget is limited. On top of this, you need to catch my attention with a succinct cover letter. These can technically be anything from the email that you send with your job application to a quick chat with a recruiter. Be thoughtful when writing this cover letter, making sure to keep our specific needs in mind and if you think we're missing something, what you think we might need from you. That being said, keep everything in your CV and cover letter relevant to the job posting or I will absolutely throw your application into the trash can. Hiring managers have to sort through hundreds of applicants in a day and I guarantee you that the only reason I would fish your CV out is if I was truly desperate to hire someone. If you can stay on topic the entire time, this demonstrates a basic level of focus that most people somehow don't even have. If you didn't get picked, don't worry about not getting the interview. You can always reapply for the role in six months if the job listing is still there. However, you should also spend this time reflecting on what you could have done better, growing your skill set, and expanding your portfolio with relevant projects. Most often, I turn people down in Web3 because the dApps in their portfolio are simply terrible. These projects are typically minimal, uninspired, or downright copycats made through boot camps. While having no dApps in your portfolio is bad, these projects will actually be way worse for you and serve no purpose other than to act as proof that you got through some basic learning. You need to demonstrate to me that you have a genuine interest in Web3 and have at least used some popular dApps like Uniswap or browsed a directory like DappRadar. 
Simply knowing how to use the packages will never be enough because people in this space are used to a certain experience and layout. The hallmarks of a great Web3 developer are their ability to write academically, mastery of smart contracts, and ingenuity with UX design. Someone who does it all can write holistic white papers, create custom smart contracts on the fly, and create familiar front ends with unique improvements. The more creative you get, the better. If you've made it to the end, congratulations. You now understand what it takes to be competitive in the tech industry. And if you apply all of my advice, you're on your way to becoming irresistible to any Web3 recruiter. Pat yourself on the back, take a minute to reflect, and get out there. If you would like more career advice or industry insight, feel free to let us know and turn on notifications for this channel so you don't miss the next one.